friends my name is Joey Balistrieri welcome to my channel today I'm going to do an unboxing and a really unique little project with the check beats exclusive box I get two boxes from the Craftica company and this is one of them it is an amazing beautiful sampler of check glass beads and I love getting this box and here's the big reveal for the month of October so every month in this box we get 26 items every month that I have received this box and this month is called full moon magic and I just have to preface this by saying uh, like sugar skulls are not my thing and um, you know black and orange together not my thing but that being said I love this box the some the beads in this box are amazing and it's just a really great box and there's a couple of unique items that I haven't seen in their box before so I'm also going to let you guys know that Hurricane Helene is like right over me right now and I really wanted to do this. This came, DHL delivers these directly from the Czech Republic and they came yesterday and I really wanted to get to this but we've had some hurricane preparation and so far it's, you know, it's okay but we typically lose power when these things are going on. So I'm gonna keep going as long as I can. And I'm just gonna run through this unboxing pretty quickly because I really wanna make something with what you see here. I'm really excited that they put this in the box this month. So the first of the 26 items we got in two colors. There's a crystal green matte gold patina melon bead in eight millimeter. And we got the same thing with a copper. So a gold and a copper, and I just love that neutral green. There's so much you can do with that, and who doesn't love a good check glass melon bead, a fluted bead? They're just amazing. And then there were three different skull beads, a sugar skull and these like funky little skeleton heads. And then this funny, I mean, they're calling this like a little ghost bead, but you guys, I have to say when I saw this, this looked like the face of a scarecrow to me. And I'm just gonna show you really quickly what I make. I do these little beaded people pendants. Um, this one has a pretty large jump ring on it because I wear it on a leather cord sometimes. But I will gather up beads to make the segments of the body. And this was like, reminded me of the Tin Man. But wouldn't this make a cute scarecrow for a fall pendant? Look how cute the little face is. And it's like the color of a pumpkin. I don't know. I just thought it was really, really cute. Um, I do have a video on how I do these. Each one is unique because you're going to be gathering up like a body section, a head, a hat. They're really fun to make. And when you start going through your bead soup and your stash for these, you know, you'll be surprised at the configuration that you come out with. But when I saw that, I thought, oh, a scarecrow for fall. I just thought that was such a cute bead. And then let's see, what is up next? There is a yellow brown luster table cut rustic square. These are in 10 millimeter. So I love the table cutting. I love a table cut bead. So it's smooth, flat and glassy on both sides. And then it has this beautiful finish around the edge and I just love that and so you know when you get three beads you can either do the three as a focal point on a piece make a pair of earrings and then a charm on another piece um, it's just a really good little quantity in a sampler to work with and we got the same thing in this Picasso brown yellow opal striped table cut bead um, I just love these these are just so beautiful just that yellow and brown it's very autumnal I, I love the colors of fall and they are really a departure for me from my pinks and purples and berries that I love so much. But this time of year, don't you just feel these colors? I just love it. Um, and then this one is really cool. I don't know if I've ever seen this. If I have, it hasn't been for a long time. This is a Picasso coral red and brown rustic table cut flat square and this is also a 10 millimeter bead isn't that the coolest bead i just think that is so unique really pretty uh, i'd love to have a pair of earrings out of that because i do love orange and this is another bead in this in this box that i am in love with and i think i will make a pair of earrings out of these i mean i have seen it and um but not in i don't have it in this color it is so beautiful this is a picasso red 
and brown table cut flower square. So it has this little flower burst right in the middle of the square. The Picasso wash all the way around the square and that beautiful red brown coloring on the table cut part, the glassy flat part. I love that. So two there, so just perfect for a little lovely pair of earrings. And this month they put in some ear wires for us in the antique bronze. Um, so great if you have gifts to make um, or even if you do craft fairs, that's just so great to have. And then I love these little antique bronze little tags that say handmade. We got those in this box and then we got a little copper witch charm. I also love that this box has a mix of silver, copper, antique brass, and some gold. I really love mixing the metals, especially this time of year. I don't know why, but I just think it's so pretty. And then these are the cutest things. I mean, I have these in a few colors, but I don't have this gorgeous orange color. This is a crystal orange bronze patina owl. And you know, this is a fairly small bead. It's a 15 by seven millimeter. So it is a fairly small bead, but I'm always amazed at the detail. You can literally see his little feet, his ears, his beak, his eyes, the feathers. Um, his wings are very, like it is a small bead, but the detail and the color oh my goodness i don't know why um but owls just remind me of fall i they i just love them and then we got that same bead in um a black orange ab and they call it a two-sided owl but it because it is very dimensional and you don't really see so much of the black or the orange it's kind of got a metallic look and every one seems to be a little bit different this one's reading a little bit more green they are so cool they they look like kind of a an etched metal but it's glass so pretty and then i absolutely love this little bead i don't know how if i'm going to be able to show you this this is an orange and white star seed bead it's a preciosa it's a 60 bead so um you know i love seed beads and I love orange. I think this is so pretty. But this way, it just, you can see the little stripes from the star in the center. But this way, there is a little white star on the core. These are so beautiful. I love those. I have a pretty extensive collection of seed beads. Um, I don't do a lot of bead weaving or seed beading anymore, but they are invaluable in design. And then I'm also thrilled about these. I love the opaque colors in the check glass faceted rounds and this beautiful orange bead is just stunning. You can see that I really love the faceted um, rounds that come from the Czech Republic and I especially love the opaque colors like the pinks and turquoise and I do not have this vibrant orange. I'm so thrilled to have that. And then you guys, isn't this the coolest thing? This is a large opaque black teardrop. It's a 24 by 14 millimeter. It has the drill hole in the glass that goes this way. And this will be going into my project. I cannot wait to do some creative wire wrapping on the top of this. I absolutely love that bead. And then I love these little guys too. I have a Bella cat and I love, we got two little cat beads they're in a um what did they call it a wheat or beige and then with a gold patina on top so you get this funky kind of a gray taupe cat with and the, the gold wash just makes you see the whiskers the little shape of the ears the eyes their little nose everything and i have some check glass cats but i don't think that i have this particular one so i was thrilled to get two of those and then there is these beautiful little, um, I would use these for spacers. These are matte metallic green faceted um, uh, fire polish rondelle. So they are matte and it is a rondelle shape. And they're, the green in this is so dark, it almost looks black. It is a really, really dark green. But I love a rondelle shape bead. They really... Adds, uh, add a lot when you use them as a spacer and we got a good little quantity of those and then um, who doesn't love a good cube bead and this is just a gorgeous classic matte black 
cube bead. It's so cute. It's a four millimeter bead. I just love it. Like these are workhorses in design. Any of these seed beads, tiny rondelles, cube beads, they are just amazing. And then look at this, you guys. This is amazing. This is a black and silver flat flower bead. It's 20 millimeter. The hole goes through the middle. This will also be making its way into the project. <gasps> Whoops. Oh my goodness. Come back. <laughs> When you drop a bead, you make a mess. Uh, this um, is going to require some creative wrapping with wire for what I want to do with it, but this is the coolest bead, and I am gonna try to add some interest to the center with my design and make it so that it hangs up and down instead of this way. But this is wonderful. You can actually turn this into a button closure for a bracelet or a necklace as well. But look how gorgeous that is. And like I said, I just love that there's silver, there's gold, there's copper, there's a matte gold, there's a little bit of everything, the antique bronze, and I really love mixing metals. And then, I don't know, this, um, I have a few favorites in this box, but I love these elongated bicone beads and I love this particular gold. So this is so beautiful. Maybe it's the angles, the elongated bicone, plus it um, doesn't have sharpness to it like sometimes a crystal bicone can have the the lines and the dimension in it the geometry of it it's soft but and I love this gold I absolutely love this gold so pretty this one is an eight by six millimeter which is also that sweet size I love a six millimeter bead sorry I can't put it down I just love these so beautiful and then these are the cutest things I have these in a few colors but not in this dark rich green this is a metallic green luster bellflower and it's a seven by five millimeter and it is just so beautiful i'm always impressed with all the details in a check glass flower bead you can literally see the petals you can see all the little like veins that would be in a flower petal on the back so beautiful we got a nice little stash of those and this is another favorite classic black this is a flat flower spacer and so it's really beautiful. It's kind of in that rondelle shape, but also it has texture and like a little pattern on both sides. Just absolutely beautiful. And we have another gorgeous little check glass faceted round. And this one is so pretty. It's a black metallic silver and it's um, half gold. And these are fire polished. So I know that it's small try to make sure the camera is focusing but aren't they gorgeous like I said I really love check glass and um, these are three millimeter beads in this bracelet so there's so much you can do I know sometimes at first glance you think oh, what am I going to do with such a tiny bead because I get questions but there are a lot of things that you can do with a three millimeter fire polish and then last but not least we got um, a 1.5 millimeter orange waxed cotton cord so i love if you've been on my channel for like five seconds i know you have seen me do all kinds of knotting and cording with different cords um, i do use a lot of the brazilian wax cord and i don't feel the wax on this one it's a very light coating but um and i there's no measurement on our ingredient list so i don't even know how long it is but it is long enough to do a necklace and that is my plan so i am just going to pause for one moment to put these items away and i'm going to come back and show you a quick and easy necklace using that cord this flower this teardrop probably some of these green flowers just a few um, at least one owl i'll put two out here and um maybe these guys too um, i've been looking at these beads since last night and kind of working this out in my head so it'll just be a second for you okay the first thing i'm going to do is prepare the ends of the cord so that can be drying a little bit while i work on what is about to get attached to it <laughs> i'm just going to take some super glue and just fill up a little end cap with super glue and just push 
the end of this cord inside and just let it dry and do the same thing on this other side oh, I see I have some a little bit of glue on the outside go okay I'm gonna just set those there to dry since my since my um, end caps that I wanted to use are a little bit bigger than my cord I may do a knot right there when it's dry that's one of my little tricks and so I'm going to let's work on the flower first this uh, is going to be kind of on the fly I have a piece of 22 gauge antique brass wire here and so this is going to be a little bit of a design on the fly and I cut myself kind of an extra long piece so that I have some options as I begin to wrap this flower bead. So I'm just warming and straightening the wire and my idea is to start with a little small spiral. So let me do that first. Just come to the end of my wire and just make a little just make a little spiral. Not very big because I want it to fit in the middle of this flower. And then I just need to position it so that um, let me get another pair of pliers to help me. Just position it so that this wire kind of goes behind the spiral that I made because I'm going to pull it through the middle of that flower. And let's put it through. Oh, I want an orange bead first, maybe. Put one of those little 60 seed beads, a little green flower. That's cute. Okay, and now I'm going to put all of this through the center of this flat flower bead and pull it through the center so it looks like that. And um, I want to have, I need to have a loop at the top here. So I'm going to, and I also want, um, let me move my hand out of the way. Um, it's nice if this spins because of what I'm going to do, but when I finish wire wrapping, I don't think that it will. But if when I do my wrap, since this is a five uh, petal flower. I want to try to have this one at the bottom and have my wrap in one of those grooves. So I'm just going to get a hold of everything and I am going to do a kind of a normal wire wrapped loop. I know this wire is so long it's hitting my camera lens and um, you'll see my idea is and this is definitely going to hit the camera <laughs> my idea is once i have this loop made to not cut the tail off but to wrap it down to the center of my flower and just secure everything i do like it spinning a little bit but i don't think it's going to still move when i'm finished with this creative i know this looks crazy <laughs> but let me wrap this down okay so can you see my how I've wrapped the stem right down to the top of the flower and I need to bring my wire around to the front and get everything the way that I want it and I'm going to take this and bring it right down to my green flower and wrap it around the green flower and back up again and now back around to thicken that stem. So it will look kind of like a, it will look kind of like a boho wrap a messy wrap
which you know looks really nice because we're going to attach this to the end of orange cord which is also very boho i just want to make sure that the front of my flower looks good and just get my i have an injury on my thumb and i'm having a hard time holding on to things so i'm just going to wrap up and let me get my pliers in there. I want that loop to be a little bit straighter. And I'm going to trim off in the back. And this little flower is ready to add. Just have to tuck my cut end here. Okay, my little flower is ready to go. And I'm going to do something similar on this little drop, just kind of create a little creative a drop. So I'll put this, another piece of that 22 gauge wire through this little drop and draw it up to the top. And I think I'm going to do this like a briolette wrap, just draw those together and I'm going to trim this off right where they meet, a little bit past where they meet, and then do a normal wire wrapped loop. And as I wrap down to the drop, I will encompass this cut wire into the, into the wrapped loop. So it looks a little bit like that. Just ignore that, that it's hanging out, and do a normal wire wrapped loop. Just like that and just start wrapping okay and from here you can decide if you want to cover the shape a little bit of this drop um, the nice thing is, like I think I'm going to keep going because I've cut this length of wire. The nice thing is, if you, you know, end up not liking what you've done, you can always unwrap and cut away and tuck your end. So I always say if you have the, you know, if you have the wire, then, you know, try out some, you know, some creative things. That's what I do anyway. Let's see. And this is where I wish some of you guys were here with me to tell me, yes, keep going or stop there. <laughs> but I'm going to keep going since I have the wire. It's almost going to look like a cone, uh, you know, a cone end cap, bead cap. Oh, it's kind of cool. But I do like seeing that little space there. Let me go around one more time and trim off. Okay, trim right in the back, and just like normal, we tuck any cut ends, anything that might be sharp, just get them tucked in. And before I move on, I always have to fuss with my jewelry, straighten everything, make sure it looks the way that I want. This is going to spin like a pendulum at the bottom of the cord, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to spin around, but look how cool that is. Look at them together. Isn't it beautiful? Okay, I don't know exactly how um, this super glue is dry enough to kind of pick things up, but um, I wouldn't tug on it after just a few minutes like that. So let's move on to making some little embellishments. Um, I think that I'm going to put some gold ball head pins through these little green glass flowers. And maybe even, let me see how these look in the middle. Oh, that's really pretty. And um, I have a little um, method for doing a simple loop when um, 
I have really fine gauge like ball head pins. It almost looks like I'm making a wire wrapped loop because I do that bend and then come in with my pliers and wrap the wire over the top and rotate the pliers out of my way and then bring it around just the way we normally do a simple loop. But at this point, instead of wrapping, I will come in with my flush cutters and just snip right at right where the wire is meeting it is meeting the loop these are this is a really small component and this is the ball head pins that i have are really fine gauge so they're a little tricky but i can get in there and then i have that and then i'll just um you know make sure that that I don't have anything sharp, make sure that the loop is closed and that it's just where I want it. But it makes a really nice, easy way to make a simple loop. I need to grab a couple more of these orange seed beads. I wasn't sure I was going to put them in the middle of every flower, but I am. So I'm just gonna repeat that two more times. Okay, and I think I'm going to do at least one of the owls. So I'm going to put the little ball head pin like he's perching on it and do a simple loop on this too. Same way. ready I don't know if he'll get used I put a couple out here and I just had some really really thick gauge jump rings from my stash and but I do think that um, I would have used a smaller um, glue in in cap cord cap cord end <laughs> I lost the word but I didn't have one so just in order to kind of make that look a little bit better and a little bit chunkier I'm just gonna do a knot right there at the end and I really can't, I sh probably should have done this before, but I just decided at the end, but I really can't, I have to be careful not to pull on this until that glue sets up a little bit. But that's just a little trick if you don't quite have the right size glue in, in cap for a cord, and that looks a little bit, you know, you can see that it's a little bit too big. So I'm just going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, now this is a simple attaching. So I'm going to put one of my large jump rings through that end and my flower drop and close that really well. Oh, these are thick, thick, thick gauge jump rings, <laughs> really thick. But for a necklace like this, it's a really good thing. Just have to put some um, power in your in your hands for a second to get it and get these thick ones closed. Okay, that's done. Let's come to the other side, same thing. This is so cute you guys this is so cute this is just going to like be so simple just around the neck and just a little loop and the weightiness of the drops will make it hang really nice and now I just want to get out some jump rings and add these little charms in I think I'm gonna add my owl there or maybe the owl here let's see Play a little bit. No, I like the owl over here and the flowers over here. So let me get out two more jump rings. 
I have this handy little assortment of jump rings and since I have like silver, antique, bronze, gold, I have a little bit of everything going on. Let's see if I want to do gold. Do I want to do gold or this antique bronze? That's very pretty. Let's do the antique bronze. I'm going to put all of those. Let's see. I think I'll put try all the flowers on that one and try my owl on one and see how they hang. That's the really nice thing about working with jump rings. If something isn't hanging right, you can add a jump add a jump ring or take one away. So cute. I love it. Oh, this is the cutest little necklace this is just so adorable and so simple no clasp at all <laughs> look at this with the little drops and when this hangs in front you have little things you can play with and look at you can see your owl you can see these beautiful beads i will put some pictures up and show you how this will look loop around the neck i know it's hard to see on my beading mat but it is such a cute simple fun fast design and um, any skill level could do this and I cannot tell you guys enough how much I recommend these boxes I haven't been getting this box for very long but I get so excited when DHL brings these beads right from the Czech Republic and I do have a discount code and I'll put all the links in the description box under this video as well as my tools and anything that I've used that I think you might like for your own work so don't forget to hit more under the video and then my boxes are very big usually so you sometimes have to hit more again to see everything but I thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with another video with the second box that I get from the Czech Republic. That one is called Bohem Style. And so I will be back with an unboxing for that one. Um, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do that and tap the bell notification. I hope everybody is safe and well and having fun on your beading mats. Child jewelry making friends.